A large retail store just canceled a huge order, leaving us with a ton of extra my pillows. But you know what? That's their loss. I'm going to make it your gain. For the first time ever, you get standard classic my pillows for wholesale prices, only $14.88. I can't believe I'm even saying that. Only $14.88. But it gets even better. For a limited time, I'm going to offer my entire classic collection at wholesale prices. Upgrade to a queen size my pillow for just $18.88. King size, only a dollar more. Get my body pillows for $29.88 and multi-use my pillows for only $9.88. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on the screen. Use your promo code to take advantage of wholesale pricing for the first time ever on TV, including my standard size my pillow, only $14.88. They've never been offered this low before. We have limited quantities at this price, so limit's going to be 10, and once they're gone, they're gone. With breaking news and political commentary from a public servant, serial entrepreneur, community leader, philanthropist, and American patriot, and a darn nice guy, it's time for the Grassroots Truthcast and your host, Gene Valentino. Hi, friends. Welcome back to another episode of Gene Valentino's Grassroots Truthcast. We're with Nanda Baghi, who's been talking to us about a number of different topics in our mini series we've put together here, eight to 15 minute episodes over the past 10 or so that are delving into different aspects of business and social cultural issues, political issues as well. Nanda has a broad base of experience, starting with his high end experience with Fortune 500 companies, hundreds of millions of dollars he's raised, either in the form of sales or in capital. He's involved in a diverse number of different businesses that became the funding sources, the funding source for these different entities. Now he enjoys the privilege of helping out Donald Trump, getting involved with the state and local issues as well. And one issue, Nanda, we're going to talk about in this episode in the next eight minutes is our debt, our national debt, our state debt, our local debt. You can eat this elephant wherever you want, but... How do we start thinking in terms of reducing debt? The Democrats don't think in those terms. Democrats think, oh, government will just keep paying you more money to become an illegal citizen, pay your health insurance, give you a cell phone and a free apartment. They'll help you do all these things for free. In fact, stay at home, don't work. And, and now we're at a point where government's debt is getting so serious that if we don't do it, something about it quickly, we are at a point of no return. What say you? Yes. Uh, now, first, understand the national debt. So if you look at the last 50 years, we are less than, you know, less than few billion, you know, less than a billion in 1950 years ago. And when I entered this country in 2020, early 2020, March 25th, we had a surplus of $5.5 billion. And unfortunately, from March to September, six months later, we got into 9-11 situation, and I was one of the luckiest survivor being late to my work by 15, 20 minutes. I was just standing on the street, Broadway and Fulton Street, watching these horrific incidents. And uh, this put us into a different trajectory, getting into a war with Iraq and Afghanistan. So again, again, as a defense, we went into this war, but... We could have solved this war in few months or few years, not like, you know, getting into that for almost 20 plus years or 24 years, 21 years to be exact, and spend $4 trillion on these wars. If that $4 trillion is spent on our infrastructure or created more jobs and getting more legal citizens, more projects, and there are so many ways you can give incentives in the beginning, and you can tax also at the uh, when something is profitable for anybody. So net net, this national debt should be taken, you know, by every citizen as if the burden is on their head. You know, if you hey, how you know, about a you, constitutional amendment that says that if there is a budget surplus, you must use the surplus first to pay down debt. Exactly, pay, exactly. That that's a point. You know, like see, we have three hundred, you know, seventy nine adults uh, percentage of adults out of three hundred and thirty three million which comes to 200 million people in our age. So you can 
create different economy class, class one to 10, and, and create some you know, framework and systems in place and make sure instead of adding a trillion dollar interest every year, you pay the interest and you pay an additional trillion back by using the tariffs or using, there are hundred different ways. Well, first thing is a will. If the leader has a will to eliminate this debt, eliminate, not, not just to pay the interest. So if the leader, whoever the president, I, that the, the intention should be there first and belief and experience should be there to wipe out this debt in less than ideally 12 years, but even in the, in, even if it is done in less than 25 years, that's great, you know, because if we took 25 years to come to this debt and let's give another 25 years to put back to the surplus, you know. So with that logic, I can write a white paper and give a, an approach and policies which can eliminate this debt and put us in surplus by 20, 49 or 2050. So the to point down, is to pay down debt completely and to yes. and, and 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 is it based on incentives for business to bring in revenue or how are you structuring the pay down? Yeah, pay down basically at the end the government income should be more than our expenses. So the way you do it is, you know, whether you do, whether you try to manage a million dollars or a hundred million or a billion or a trillion, you make sure you have a surplus cash inflow of at least 33%, at least. So, and minimize the expenses to the bare minimum and create the opportunities to have an income. Because today we have resources. We have white gold, which is lithium. We have black gold, which is oil. We have yellow gold as a gold. So we have so many resources. You know, these resources are worth over $250 trillion. $250 on trillion. The expense, on the expense side, how about uh, go, uh, President Trump's idea of eliminating the Department of Education and transferring education and standardizations to the state level, uh, as he did with the abortion issue, but differently in the sense of the standards applying at the state level and let the states compete like they do for business. Let them compete as well for quality education as part of their portfolio, their complement in drawing you to my state. No, exactly. See, all this education and all are like, I would say, I won't even put them in the top three or top five because the first one is the energy independence. You know, yes. the number one category is number one category is energy independence. That means manufacture, create more jobs, do the production, do the consumption here and make the production in such a way it is almost double than the consumption. You know, that way you can export it and, you know, can reduce the imports. And, and apply the same, you know, logic, you know, basically creating more products, creating more services, having more legal citizens, you know. Again, the problem with the legal is they won't pay the taxes and we have to, on a humanitarian grounds, we need to make sure they have a shelter, they have a food, they have, you know, all the 10 things that a human life needs. And then at the expense of the legal citizens, you know. So the point is we... We need to stop our wars. We need to stop our charity. And we need to focus on our, you know, we have uh, such a vast country, vast resources, encourage the enterprises, encourage the manufacturing, and try to be the number one manufacturing hub in the world. You know, None that is, a, that is a vision Trump has got. You know, like President Trump, bring that passion and vision and his execution. You know, he's not like other politician who talk something, who deliver nothing, who do not do anything, you know. Whatever the 20 things he said, he will make every attempt, every minute of his life. If he really wins and puts back into White House, he will make sure his 20 promises, his 20 promises are at least addressed at some level, you know. So that is a kind of a commitment I have seen with him. Whereas other politicians, you know, they do not even have a courtesy to visit their district. They don't even have a courtesy to do something for their district business and district people. So I, I am actually out of words where we always look for representative and we assume that representative is working in favor of our district, in favor of our city, in favor of our city and state. 
which not or I, I would give this challenge to all the 435 congressmen how many of them really did something for their district if he's not done then you have a two year time and if you have not done out of 10 things you are supposed to do there is no second term you know this is not a game where you take 10 years to get an expert and do it you know this is a job where you hit the ground running on day one you know? Oh, so, from from your lips to God's ears, Nanda Bhagi, this has been a capsuled segment talking specifically about national debt and how you perceive. Folks, he has a great insight on how even the, I thought the debt was unrecoverable, but when you listen to him talk, you get a sense that there could be a plan, and clearly he believes it can happen under Donald Trump. Nanda Bhagi, thank you for joining us on this segment of the national debt on Gene Valentino's Grassroots Truthcast. We'll be back right after this with our next segment on the battleground states and their issues demographics and policies and the wish list right after this thanks for joining us for gene valentino's grassroots truthcast be sure to like and subscribe and god bless america